the anthropologist and philosopher Dr. Merlin Donald has done a nice work in looking at the historicity of human development. And he's branched these down into epochs, where the epochs really are reflective of humans as tool users and what tools we employ and how we employ the tools. Not to get into the devils of the details of these various epochal changes, what Donald has basically demonstrated is that we've used various tools and with each tool we become ever more sophisticated in the way we appreciate the world, engage the world, and engage each other. And clearly we're to the point where we're making the transition into the, the cognitive area and more than that, merging the cognitive and the technological. You know, if early tools were somewhat more tactile and rather crude, extensions of our physical self, what we're doing is we're refining that physicality and turning that inwards in many ways. And what we're doing is becoming more precise, more granular, more specific, and more complex in making tools that can articulately affect nuanced areas of, of our capacity, of our, of our function, of our structure. We see that by the miniaturization of a variety of things. And in that miniaturization, you see an increase in its functional capacity. The computer, the microchip, the nanochip, moving down to the very small scale to be able to get the very large function. And the same is true with regard to compatibility. At first, what we were looking to do is modify ourselves crudely through prosthetics and orthotics. That became ever more sophisticated, and as a consequence, we became much more refined, working at smaller and smaller scales with greater granularity and ultimately greater precision. We see that today in the nomenclature of not only medicine, but also the way much of science and technology infiltrates the public life. Personalized approaches, precision approaches, the idea of increasing specificity and sophistication, the capability of editing certain things on a variety of levels from the subcellular to have effect all the way to the social, from the personal, perhaps all the way to the political. So I think what we are seeing is that the 20th century, perhaps more than any, can be viewed as the century of technology, the epoch of technology. But the bow wave of the 20th century is to then advance that to the fusion of science, technology, and information, how we will use not only the tools of our knowledge and our understanding, but how we will develop new theoretical approaches and ever new tools at different levels of granularity that allow us to go to the very, very small and perhaps to the very, very expansive. And then to actually be able to harness these in such a ways through the use of broad scale information, which is indeed expansive, bringing information together in real time and global scales, various levels of information that we can then assimilate and synthesize, creates something that heretofore was impossible. Real time exchange of information, acquisition of information across a variety of scales. So what we're seeing really is this evolutionary change in the way we use tools, develop tools, and the way we engage those tools to be able to affect our environments and ourselves. But the question then becomes, is this not just evolutionary, is this revolutionary? In other words, will we create something, whether in the paradigms of our approach to science and what that evokes for us on a variety of scales, biological, social, perhaps even psychological and political, and will it would actually change perhaps something more? Will the change in the biological in some way have that ripple effect? So we can't go backwards, so to speak. In other words, we do make something new. And what will that thing be? Will we make other life forms? Will we be able to create perhaps consciousness in some machine system? We'll be able to modify ourselves in certain ways that not only extend our viability, but extend our lifespan and perhaps even expend the idea of what we can do with regard to our cognitive function and our physical functions, and these are all certainly not only on the horizon of potentiality, but they're moving back ever closer on that horizon to probability, possibility. And I think that this then becomes the new reality.